Okay, so there is a lot to know to solve this algebra equation right here, but there's a particular technique and method that uh, will make solving this equation much, much easier. Matter of fact, let's take a look at the problem. We have a to the fourth minus three a squared minus four is equal to zero. This is a fourth degree polynomial equation. All right, now we have a multiple choice question here. Let's take a look at our answers. So A is plus or minus two, four and I. B is plus or minus two and plus or minus I. And C is plus or minus two I and plus or minus three I. Okay, now feel free to use a calculator. But if you could figure this out, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, I'm going to use this nice, lovely technique to solve this equation. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one more time, here is our equation. Again, this is a polynomial equation, and uh, you should know something, hopefully, about polynomials as it's a huge topic in algebra. But a to the fourth minus three a squared minus four is equal to zero. Let's take a look at that right answer. The correct answer is b, plus or minus two, and plus or minus i. Okay, now if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence for being able to solve a fourth degree polynomial equation, which is a big deal. Okay, I'll explain why in a second, but anything beyond a second degree, which is a quadratic equation, uh, is, you know, kind of like you're in a different realm in algebra. So like a third degree polynomial or higher, well, you have to use different tools. I'll get to all this in just one second, but if you're like, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I'm totally lost, well, don't despair because it's a good uh, possibility that you never learned this, okay? This uh, stuff that we're talking about here in this problem is typically, typically, excuse me, not taught in a first year algebra course. So if that's all you've taken, well, listen, don't feel bad because, again, you probably haven't learned this in an Algebra 1 or a first year algebra course. This is typically taught uh, like in Algebra 2 courses, pre-calculus, kind of second year algebra courses. But uh, stick with me anyways because I think you'll be able to understand the solution. All right, so here is the problem, and we're dealing with a polynomial equation. So what is a polynomial? Okay, well, a lot of people say, well, I know what a polynomial is, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I study it all the time in algebra. Yeah, but what is it? Okay, well, you're like, well, I don't really know what it is, but if I see a polynomial walking down the street, I'll be able to recognize it. Well, again, what is a polynomial? Well, let me go ahead and just tell you real quick. So these are terms, okay, algebraic terms, of a polynomial. But what makes a polynomial a polynomial is we have a variable or variables, but namely we have to pay attention to the exponent on the uh, those uh, particular variables, okay? So what the exponent can be is basically a whole number, uh, zero and positive integers, okay? So if you have something like uh, a to the three-fourths, well, this is not a polynomial, okay? This is something different in mathematics, and that's important because when we recognize something as a polynomial, a whole bunch of uh, things come into play. There is a bunch of tools, math tools, that we can apply for polynomials. So we love uh, polynomial equations and polynomials in general at all levels of math. That would include even calculus. But anyways, uh, we're dealing with a fourth degree polynomial equation. Now, one of the things that you need to know about polynomial equations, and let's take a look at a simple example, like a squared is equal to 16. Now, this is a basic quadratic equation, but it's a second degree polynomial equation. So how do we solve this? You might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, this is easy. All we have to do is take the square root of both sides and you get a is equal to plus or minus four. And that's absolutely correct. So this was uh, pretty easy to solve. And um, 
with quadratic equations, if you don't have an easy problem and you can't solve it by factoring or taking the square roots of both sides, you can always use the quadratic formula, which is awesome. We have a formula to solve every single quadratic equation situation. But anyways, let's go back to our uh, answer. So a is equal to plus or minus four. What does that mean? Well, uh, one of the answers is positive four. The other answer, okay, is a negative four. So we have two solutions here. So uh, this goes back to this concept of the fundamental theorem of algebra. Matter of fact, I don't even know if I mentioned it yet. I kind of forgot, but I will uh, we'll stress this now. And that is the following, okay? To solve this equation right here at this level of math, you need to understand that the degree, the highest power of your polynomial, this is how many solutions you must have, whether they be real and or imaginary or complex. So a quadratic equation, second degree polynomial equation, two solutions, and here they are. All right, so what does that tell us about this problem right here? Well, you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, this is a fourth degree. Now I use this word degree. What does that mean? Well, that's the highest power. So we wanna write our equation in standard form, highest to lowest power. So the degree, again, is the highest power of the equation. So this is a fourth degree polynomial equation. So there is four solutions. So if I put like down here an option D and I put uh, let's say two and negative 10 as answers, well, you know this would be incorrect because well, we're looking for four solutions. Now it's possible you could have double uh, roots like in a quadratic equation, uh, X squared, I know I'm kind of doing a lot here. You can bounce on the X axis. So you could have a double root, but still those are two uh, unique solutions just being the same number. All right, now some of you might be saying, hey, Mr. YouTube Math Man, my hair is already standing uh, straight up. You're overwhelming me with uh, all this algebra knowledge. What's going on? Just get to this equation. Well, listen, uh, things that I'm talking about here are things that you should understand to uh, really um, be able to handle this type of equation. So it's just a good review and uh, things that we need to be thinking about. All right, so we have a fourth degree polynomial equation. I know I'm looking for four solutions. So what are my options? Well, before we get into the actual tools and mechanics to solve this equation, if you came across this problem on a math test, no one should get this wrong. So you, some of you might be saying, yes, Mr. YouTube Math Man, tell me how I can get this right every single time. Well, you have the solutions right here, okay? So here are our answers. We can literally plug these in to figure out uh, which one uh, works. So for example, let's uh, see uh, this option right here. We have plus or minus two. So that means two, negative two um, are the answers and then four and I. So we could just start checking these answers and see if it works. So we could plug in a two for A and see if this is a good solution. So this would be two to the fourth, okay, minus three times two squared minus four. Let's see if this is equal to zero. All right, so two to the fourth, that's 16, right? Two times two times two times, uh, that's four twos. Hopefully that's 16 minus what? Well, two squared is four, four times three is 12. So 16 minus four, is four, four minus this four is zero. That is a good solution. So two is a good solution, but we also have two over here, right? So we're like, yeah, all right. Well, we just can't say this is the answer because this uh, one over here also has two. This has a two I, that's different. But my point is that you could check all these solutions and figure out which one is the right answer. Okay, so when you have an algebra equation or some sort of equation on a multiple choice exam, you can always use the solutions to get the right answer. Okay, now, but beyond that, if we took away these multiple choice options, we uh, simply just have to know the math to solve this. Okay, now that is a big, big kind of um, uh, topic in and of itself. We're talking about things like the rational root theorem, uh, Descartes' rule, Descartes' rule of signs, and other advanced techniques like poly uh, uh, polynomial long division, synthetic division, graphing polynomials. Now, some of you might be like, I have no idea what you're talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, these are things that you should know, and I'll give you some uh, specific recommendations on how you can learn all these things, because these are the tools that you need, you need to consider to solve this equation. However, as I indicated in the beginning of this video, there is a fantastic, lovely technique 
that uh, can uh, make solving this equation much, much easier. But you have to recognize it, and we're going to go ahead and get into that right now. Okay, so let's take a look at our problem. We have a to the fourth minus 3a squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So this is our problem, but some of you might be thinking uh, to yourself, you're like, you know, Mr. YouTube Math Man, uh, this uh, thing right here kind of reminds me of this right here. a squared minus 3a minus 4, right? Doesn't it kind of look uh, similar in terms of, it kind of appears to be like, well, first of all, it is a trinomial, but it seems to have the pattern of a quadratic trinomial because here we have two and then this is like half of this power is half of this two, right? So this is two, this is one, but here we have four, half of the four is two. So it's like, boy, this seems kind of very similar and uh, maybe uh, there's something uh, to this pattern that we can use. Well, indeed there is, but we need to know how to factor uh, this right here. So this is basic algebra. So assuming you know how to factor a squared minus 3a minus 4 is equal to 0, the factors here is a minus 4 times a plus 1 is equal to 0. So we could easily solve this equation right here by setting each of these factors equal to 0 and solving. So you might be saying, well, boy, can we kind of use the fact that this thing uh, uh, seems to follow this pattern to solve this equation? And the answer is a resounding absolutely. We can and you should uh, look for opportunities to use what we call substitution in a factoring scenario. Okay, so here's how we're going to approach this. So we have a to the fourth minus three a squared minus four is equal to zero. So let's let x equal to a squared. Okay, so let's let x equal to a squared. Now, what happens? Well, if we can replace an a squared with an x, we're going to be able to rewrite this trinomial. So let me just kind of back up here. So uh, a squared, okay, we uh, put an a squared in here, and we just kind of made this uh, to the second power and this to the first power. So we have a squared to the second, right? Well, uh, this is equal to a to the fourth because we're going to multiply this two to that two. So we get back to a to the fourth. We're not breaking anything here. We're just rewriting this in a different way, okay? So a squared to the second power is a to the fourth minus 3a squared, but this is to the first, right? because one times two is still two minus four. But this is an opportunity to use what we call a substitution um, to factor this. Uh, now this is a trinomial, but this is a fourth degree polynomial. Okay, so we're going to use substitution to factor this thing. So here is how this is gonna work. So we're going to replace, or we're gonna let x equal to these a, uh, uh, x, x equal a squared. Okay, so there you go. I'm sorry if I stumbled and bumbled on my words, but uh, let's go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so instead of a squared, because x is going to be equal to a squared, we're going to replace these a squareds with x. So we're going to get x squared minus 3x minus 4. So that's awesome because we can factor or hopefully have the skills to factor this basic quadratic equation. And uh, what we have is x minus 4 times x plus 1 is equal to 0. This is factorable. But remember, x is what? It's a squared. Well, let's just go ahead and plug the uh, a squared back in for x right now. So now we have a squared minus 4 times uh, a plus 1 or a squared plus one. You see, I just replaced, I kind of used a little trick here, right? So now I'm gonna uh, put that a squared back in for x and continue to factor this thing. Okay, so we have a little bit of work here to do, but uh, this is really going to allow us to solve this uh, polynomial equation quite easily. So let's go to take the next step, which of course is having you quickly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Now, I definitely need your help to grow my channel on YouTube, okay? It does count, or YouTube does actually, you know, look at these metrics. How many people subscribe? How many people hit that notification bell? Now, this is what makes my channel grow. Now, I've been on YouTube for a long time, like 10 plus years. I have well over 3,000 videos, I think, at this uh, point, And I'm like up to, I'm getting very close. To, I'm pretty excited about this. Uh, pretty close to 600,000 subscribers and pretty close to 100 million views. So I feel like, you know, I'm making some sort of uh, small impact in the vast world of people struggling in mathematics because there is an infinite amount of people that uh, have a tough time with math. Unfortunately, most of these people uh, should be doing very well in math, but we have a problem, and that is 
uh, people aren't getting the right instruction. They're not getting the right encouragement. They're not getting the right uh, type of uh, really mentorship to be successful in math. Okay, so if you're struggling with math, you need someone in a position of math authority to tell you you can absolutely be successful. And oftentimes I've heard this through the years, especially uh, you know from maybe someone like a parent saying I wasn't good in math, so therefore my child's not going to be good in math. Nothing could be further from the truth. If you want to be successful in math, you can, but it takes work and time, and most importantly, clear and comprehensive math instruction that you understand. So if you need help beyond this video and this level of mathematics, we're talking about like Algebra 2 and or Pre-Calculus. I'm going to leave links to those course courses in the description. But here's the thing. You know, uh, this message of not giving up uh, on yourself when it comes to mathematics, it's an important message, and this is why I make these videos. So I do need your help uh, to grow this channel. So the best way to support what I do is to hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. So let's get back to the rest of this prom. Okay, so here is our factors. We got it down to a squared uh, minus 4 times uh, a squared plus 1. Remember, we use this little trick here. Uh, we let x uh, we let x equal to a squared. We substituted those a squared in for x. Then we had this lovely little quadratic trinomial. We factored it x minus 4 times x plus 1, and then we replaced this x back with a squared because x is equal to a squared. So now we have to factor this thing. Okay, so factoring is always the way to go if you can factor. Okay, so <clears throat> excuse me. So here. We have a what kind of situation? Well, this is a difference of two square uh, scenario, but really we don't even have to factor this, okay? Because what we have is this thing, this factor times this thing, two factors times itself is equal to zero. So even at this point, we could just simply set each factor equal to zero. So a squared minus four is equal to zero, and a squared plus one is equal to zero. So let's go ahead and solve for a, and let's go ahead and uh, start with this equation first. So a squared minus 4 is equal to 0. How do we solve this? Well, we add 4 for, uh, to both sides of the equation. And now look at this. We have a squared is equal to 4. We already solved this. We're going to take the square root of both sides. So a is equal to positive negative 2. So remember, this is a fourth degree polynomial equation. Now we already have two solutions right here, plus a positive 2 and a negative 2. These are two uh, unique solutions. All right, so let's solve this equation right here. Uh, a squared plus 1 is equal to 0. I have to subtract 1 from both sides. Now I have a squared is equal to negative 1. So we need to be on the lookout here because we're dealing with complex and imaginary roots. So we'll take the square root of both sides. So a is equal to uh, plus or minus the square root of negative 1. And by definition, the square root of negative 1 is the imaginary uh, component i, the imaginary number i. So uh, that is like the most basic thing that you learn about complex numbers. So our uh, final uh, the rest of the solutions here is a is equal to plus or minus i, because this is a plus or minus and this is i. So we have one, two, three, four total solutions for our fourth degree polynomial equation. Now, uh, being able to factor this way made this equation much, much easier, and that is a great opportunity, but really... Uh, this is kind of a special case kind of problem. We were lucky in terms of we were able to factor it because it had that pattern of a quadratic trinomial. But if you couldn't factor it, guess what you would have to do? Well, you'd have to break out the rational uh, rational root theorem, uh, Descartes' rule of signs, and a whole bunch of other tools to kind of work this solution. And, uh, you know, these problems do get quite, uh, I would say, uh, difficult, and that is a relative term, but they do take work, okay? So if you're at a higher level of math and you're having a tough time, well, don't get discouraged because learning is all about making mistakes and struggling with something until eventually you get it, and the only way you're going to master this is through practice, 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 practice. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.